so the pandemic has reduced food distribution, uh, raised prices of food uh, in immense, so you can't move around and seek out uh, economic opportunities in the same way. And so it's a gigantic setback. That represents over five years of uh, progress. First time that that number's gone up since it's been seriously measured. Let's talk about vaccines. Already some of the richest countries like the US, like the UK, lots of other Western European nations are already putting in money. So they're first in line when a vaccine becomes available. Is this the best way to handle this? Well, the vaccine work, uh, the R&D piece, including the expense of trials, the rich countries, particularly the US, have funded that work uh, for a lot of these companies. And so even the companies who are doing it just on a breaking basis, they can afford to do it because of that US and other money. Uh, so for the research side, uh, that's good news. For getting the money to buy the vaccine uh, for the poor countries, that has not yet come together. Uh, the US hasn't joined those meetings, even though it's normally with HIV and polio and so many things, the leader in global health. And, and so as yet, we still have to pull that together. Uh, and here, of course, there's this huge benefit, even to the rich countries, that the epidemic won't keep coming back. So the plan to have lots of factories and the plans of how we allocate it, including uh, money for procurement for the poor countries, that's still, uh, despite some good work by Europe and uh, others, uh, we, we still don't have enough uh, to support that basic need. Is this surprising to you, though, because President Donald Trump has, all been, has always been about America first, and uh, he's pulled out of the World Health Organization in the middle of a pandemic, and he's been more recently talking about how well the U.S. has handled this compared to any other nation. Would you agree? Well, the U.S. has made a lot of mistakes. You would expect it to have the least deaths uh, and were among the worst because of what happened with the diagnostics and the way that, uh, you know, we let it come in without having lots of, of testing and quarantine. So, you know, whatever we've done wrong to date, you can still see we're the country with the longest wait time for the tests. That, that really shouldn't be the case. Uh, but the U.S. Congress allocates the money and they've maintained uh, the money for all the global health activities, malaria, polio, HIV. And so as I talk to the Congress, I think there's a lot of people there on, in both parties who think that having 1% of a supplemental bill take care of this international response, which is humanitarian, it's strategic, but also from a pure selfish point of view, that's the way uh, that you bring this to a close. So I do think at some point here in the next six months, the U.S. will step up. It has such a great, proud tradition of helping in global health. Uh, the distractions of the domestic challenge of the epidemic have made it slower to do that than I would have expected. But the Congress, uh, you know, they care and, and they, they like the two organizations that would make sure this money is well spent. All right, and finally, there's been a lot of misinformation around this COVID period, including about you. There's a lot of conspiracy theories that are getting shared around. What do you make of all that? I don't know. I'm worried about those, those rumors. Uh, I'm surprised to find myself, you know, as a big supporter of vaccines saving lives to sort of being attacked for almost the opposite of that. Our foundation, you know, our proudest work is the number of children who are alive today, tens of millions, because of the vaccine coverage that we've been a partner in increasing in every country of the world.